China's new Great Wall of Sand policy going into effect in the South China Sea. You're looking at Spartly Island, which was created recently out of a sandbar and now has a landing strip where the Chinese Air Force can operate. Now, why is this of concern? Because so much of the world's trade goes through this area in the South China Sea. If you look at figures here, you'll see that an estimated 60% of Australian trade passes through the South China Sea, 5 trillion in trade overall flowing through the region. That's an estimate. It's perhaps even more than that. And the nations around Asia are not happy about it. No more illegal outposts, says one. China keep out of Philippine seas, which they have some disputes there with the Philippines. Of course, you all know about Senkaku Diaoyu Islands that the Japanese have been complaining about. Well, it continues to be an issue throughout Asia as China builds these sandbars and builds them up similarly in the way that they did in Dubai to create islands out of sandbars to increase their land area. The Chinese are cleverly doing that and will continue to do it not just for military means but also natural resources because there's a lot of untapped crude oil underneath on the seabed throughout the region that China wants a stake in. Unfortunately, so do the rest of the Asian countries and some of them have claims. These are international waters traditionally and so China has to try to use diplomacy and cleverly gain control of these regions without setting off the regional powers. Now, one of the methods they're using is similar to what was used in Israel over the past many, many years. What they did in Israel, in Gaza, in the West Bank, is they make these tiny settlements and then they expand them by bringing in the infrastructure. And then before you know it, they've carved out a big section of land and it's become theirs. So China doing the same thing. These sandbars, part of an overall strategy to create more area of sea and international waters because if there is no dispute with the sandbars and if the Chinese move in there and operate small bases, trading posts, and landing strips, they can claim sovereignty over time. So squatters rights. What do you think? I think that this is definitely a powder keg that could go off. So Senkaku Diaoyu Islands was just a start. And now that China is building sandbars with their great wall of sand in the sea, anything is possible going forward. This new story coming out of south of China should have concerns for everybody in the world. Yes because it will involve you and yours in the near future. China's manufacturers are shifting towards zero labor factories. That's right, zero labor. A company in South China's Guangdong province is building a city's first zero labor factory. Its effort to address worker shortages, rising labor costs, and of course an aging labor pool in China has these semi-autonomous smart factories and it could be a sign of things to come in China especially since the local government is basically pouring a ton of money into this type of technology okay so instead of employing currently 2,000 workers this company will require just 200 employees to operate the software be technicians be repair people for uh, these robots that will be producing the finished goods that the company sells. Everwin Precisions Technology Limited is the company and uh, they are currently investing a ton of money into automation and hoping that it will pay off and it most certainly probably will since one of the highest costs of doing business in this type of operation is its labor costs. Now, what does it say? It says this, that China thinks that slave labor is too expensive. So not only do they think that having slaves make practically nothing is too expensive, they don't want any labor overhead whatsoever. So to that end, the Guangdong government 
will spend an equivalent of $152 billion to replace humans with robots within three years. This is live, okay? This is happening now. 2,000 co companies across the province, in addition to two advanced industrial bases for robot production to be used in more factories. So how is China going to compete with Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos, Burma, uh, Thailand, Philippines, and the rest with their manufacturing and labor costs? Well, they're going to have no labor whatsoever. What does that spell? That spells a lot of things, including social unrest in China, because they already have a problem with low salaries, people unemployed, not getting enough benefits. You know the drift on that. So this will only mean more social unrest, but it could be the answer to China's short-term problems with reduced influence in finished goods. More to come on this in the coming years. You can't make this stuff up. China's currency no longer undervalued, says the IMF. Now, what they're claiming here is that magically, suddenly, the Chinese yuan is properly valued on the world market against other currencies. Now, we know that the IMF is ready to make the Chinese yuan part of its basket of currencies. And this is probably why they're coming out with this uh, bizarre statement, because... Over the past several years, there have been many top economists that have argued that the Chinese yuan should have been three to one years ago. And I certainly have said that myself because China is the world's largest creditor nation. The United States is the world's largest debtor nation. And yet the IMF is trying to convince us all that 6.2 to one is a fair value for their currency. Uh, you just can't make this stuff up. Um, our assessment now is that the substantial real effect appreciation over the past few years has brought the exchange rate to a level that is no longer undervalued. It's still pegged to the U.S. dollar. That's complete fiction. Now, anybody that thinks that the Chinese yuan is properly valued um, is smoking something very, very strong. What do you think? The cartoon of the month looks like this. China, a landlord in the United States. Well, this cartoon has a little bit of fact and a lot of speculation, but anything is in possibility. Basically, uh, this cartoon comes from a university professor in Beijing who proposes that China, in fact, take land holdings in the United States for debt unpaid to China from the United States. This would come in the form of real estate deals, industrial parks in which Chinese workers would be allowed to work in the United States in these zones and have uh, free reign over these industrial parks and development areas. Now, if this seems uh, scary to you, consider that there are already a lot of deals in the American Southwest with Chinese companies to be able to develop things like uh, solar power plants, uh, automobile plants, and things like that. So um, it would just basically be a deal that would have to be broadened and approved by uh, the top American leadership, but it is not out of the realm of possibility. China sets up largest gold fund for nations along Silk Road, 16.1 billion, 65 countries along the new Silk Road proposal. 60 of them have already committed to this largest gold fund in the world. Now, the $16.1 billion is just a start, and basically what that will do is it will allow these countries to participate in what is the world's number one gold producer and also uh, the major importer and uh, eventually exporter of gold. And uh, so what they're trying to do basically is they're trying to say, hey, we're going to use gold and RMB to allow you to exchange on our huge Shanghai Gold Exchange. And if you join this fund, you'll be able to do other things financially with us, not just 
buy and sell gold, but gold exploration as well, because as you know, China mines a lot of gold, and basically what they want to do is be able to mine gold among those 65 countries on the New Silk Road. So they are allowed to mine for gold. The countries are allowed to buy the gold. They're partner in this. And this is huge. This is just the beginning, and it shows that China is in it for the long haul when it comes to gold. What is a Chinese unicorn? Well, let's take a look. Chinese Unicorn is a company that is very, very big, and there are several of them in China. A unicorn is a valuation of $1 billion equivalent or more. And it basically has exclusively belonged to internet-based companies. If you take a look at um, most of the companies in China that are this big, internet, mobile commerce, clothing accessories, machinery, and telecom devices. Most of these companies, by the way, are internal. If you notice that uh, these big companies uh, that do e-commerce here, most of them are internal and they don't do a significant amount of sales abroad. Alibaba, Taobao, Tmall, and so on. Xiaomi, which is a smartphone maker that's trying to get inroads into India and United States and other places. Um, still haven't got a significant amount of sales abroad. So China's still looking for a worldwide brand that can be uh, on the scale of an Apple. It's not easy to do. They are very successful internally, but when it comes to playing on the big stage, uh, these big Chinese companies have looked to acquire other firms, uh, either getting stakes of a current company or buying them out completely probe into solar maker Hanergy. Now, many of you have probably heard about this, but solar power company Hanergy, their stock dropped by almost one half in one day. In one day. It goes to show you that a lot of these Chinese firms are simply overvalued. And the same can be said about U.S. firms as well. I mean, we have stock markets at all-time highs, and we have companies that have questionable revenue and questionable cash flow. We obviously can't see their real balance sheets, but this should be a warning to everybody investing or thinking about investing in Chinese companies. First of all, when you invest in a foreign company, you have some risk, and of course, you're not going to get A shares. You're going to get B or C shares, non-voting shares, and shares where you don't get a stock certificate. That is uh, a happening of the past. Now, you just basically get an equitable remedy for that stock share that you purchased. And having been in many Chinese companies throughout China, I've seen uh, companies that uh, are run quite well and managed quite well. I've seen companies that are questionable, and I've seen companies that are completely false fiction they don't have the assets they don't have the R&D they don't have the management that is required to get these kind of stock uh, prices that they're getting believe me I've been inside them I know and finally 19 jailed for organizing prostitution in China the graphs and the crackdowns on the black market in China continue and this one is interesting because it involved the uh, local police, the police chief, and many people. Eleven people got indicted uh, to some of them life sentences, other ones ranging from 15 years in prison. And what's interesting about this is that uh, the nightclub that had employed more than 4,500 girls in total before it was finally raided and forced to close. Now, there's extensive dossiers on the suspects and the guilty that have been charged and tried for prostitution rings and, among other things, selling uh, cigarettes that uh, are at uh, premium prices and, in some cases, international cigarettes that have been smuggled in. This is all fun and games in China, had been happening basically in every province, and uh, the crackdowns continue, like I said. This capital city, Zhengzhou, um, has a public security bureau chief um, who was involved in the ring. So uh, more crackdowns around China. The black market, like I said, is very, very strong. 
and this is just really the tip of the iceberg as um, they're not able to get everybody involved in prostitution, in gambling, in drug rings, and things of that nature. It's just too ingrained into the culture, and there are too many people, like I've said before, that need work, and the black market is one avenue for people to be employed in China. Remember, there's 1.4 billion people here, and there's just simply not enough jobs. So um, where there's money, where there's opportunity, there's going to be a lot of people involved, and organized crime still thrives in many parts of China.